Hi, welcome to sixth session on measure theory, third session on outer measure, first session on Cantor set. Probably I may not need the second session unless it is going to be on Cantor's Lebesgue function that will be at a later stage. Let us get started. See, Cantor set is something which everybody likes, okay, because the geometric description is easy. Okay, they love it. It's also known as Cantor's middle third sets. So, what is it done? So, I have 0, 1, closed interval, right? Look at the open middle third, one third to two third. Okay, so call this if you want G1. Okay, you remove this. So, what I am left with? I am left with 0 to 1 third and 2 third to 3 thirds which is 1. Then again in this you leave the middle which is going to be something like 1 by 9 to 2 by 9. This is 7 by 9 to 8 by 9. Okay. Then what are you left with? You are left with, sorry, this is not a good picture. Yeah. So, you are left with something like 0 to 1 by 9 and 2 by 9 to 3 by 9 and this is 6 by 9 to 7 by 9 and union 8 by 9 to 9 by 9 which is 1 right you keep on doing now again take the middle third and remove etc so you call it as this is G2. If you want G21, G22, which is G2. Union is G21, union G22. And here G3, G3 will be a lot of things. Okay, this is G31, and this is G32, and G34, sorry, G33 and G34. Let's not worry about okay. So at the nth stage, what do I have? I have a Gn, which is union of G and K, K running from 1 to 2 to the power n, right? And n equal to 1, okay, n equal to 1, it is 2 to the power n minus 1, yeah, so, right? And this is at n equal to 2, it is 2 to the power n minus 2. So this is this, therefore it will be 2 to the power n minus 1 open intervals okay and what is the length of each g and k length is going to be 1 by 3 to the power n this is of length 1 by 3 this is of length 1 by 3 squared this is of length 1 by 3 3 cubed and so on you understand that yeah so, I let the G equal to union G n, okay. So, this is going to be an open set because each of the G n is disjoint union 2 to the power n minus open intervals. Each of length 1 by 3 power n, yeah. And at each level, let us look at C 1 okay to be this interval so this is c1 okay these closed intervals are c1 okay c1 is 0 1 minus g1 c2 is 0 1 minus g1 union g2 yeah we had already removed this, I also we are removing this. Therefore, this will be, so how many intervals are there? This has two closed intervals of each of length, again 1 by 3. And this is two squared closed intervals, each of length 1 by 3 squared. And at Cn, 
will be 0 1 minus okay k equal to 1 to n of g k so this will be 2 to the power n close intervals each of length 1 by 3 to the power n yes and notice that each c n is a closed set in fact it's also compact because closed and bounded is compact right so the Cantor set C is union is our intersection C n and n greater than or equal to 1 okay so it's intersection of closed sets therefore it's closed right and notice that you also see that C C C one contains C two, C two contains C three, etc. Therefore, it's a nested sequence. Okay, nested set, nested sequence of not intervals of but compact sets, and they are all non-empty. Therefore, we know intersection C is not empty. This is also Cantor's theorem. right are you following okay and the and notice that what will be the outer measure so c is intersection c n therefore outer measure of c is less than or equal to outer measure of c n but remember c n is union of c n k k running from 1 to 2 to the power n okay each c n k is a closed interval of length 1 by 3 to the power n therefore outdoor measure by countable subadditivity okay outer measure of c is less than or equal to uh, this is monotonicity Monot monotonicity of c n but that's less than equal to this countable subadditivity. M star of C and K, K equal to 1 to N, or 2 to the power N. Right? But remember, we had already proved outer measure of any interval is length of the interval. Therefore, this is equal to length of C and K, K equal to 1 to 2 to the power N. But we know each length. C and K is of length this therefore the total length is 2 by 3 to the power n right therefore we see that outer measure of C is less than equal to 2 by 3 to the power n for all n hence we conclude the outer measure of C is 0 okay as I already observed C is not empty you can also see okay all the endpoints this is I used Cantor's theorem to do that but you can also observe all the endpoints of C and K lie in C right for example this is my C and K let us say okay something let us call it a and b let's not worry about what it is this is my c and k and then i'm going to remove only this so these points will remove so th this point this point will continue in c n plus one right and i am actually introducing new points okay yeah the power is half let me sh pause Yeah, power came back. So, the next thing you should notice is if suppose x is in the Cantor set, remember that therefore x is in C n for all n. Therefore, there exists some at least one C n k, call it A n k, B, B n k, just call it only C n, okay? A n, B n. Okay. Okay. This x has to be, there exists one. C and K, call it A and B and this X belong to that. 
right? Therefore, I have a n less than or equal to x less than or equal to b n, right? Now, the same thing, c n plus 1 is a subset of c n, therefore, there will exist a n plus 1, b n plus 1. This will be a subset of my a n b n. My x has to belong to this, therefore, it belongs to some a n plus 1, b n plus 1. Therefore, you can see there exists a sequence a n b n okay and notice that a n b n are all in c so that a n increases to x and b n decreases to x right so for each x just pause review there is something very interesting So, what have we shown is that if x belongs to C, there exists a sequence A and B and what are they? They are the endpoints of deleted the constituent intervals. Con let me write the word constituent intervals. That is each C n is union of C and K k equal to 1 to 2 power n or whatever it is, these intervals I call constituent intervals. They make up c n, right? So, there exists sequence a n b n, n points of this so that a n increases to x and b n decreases to x, right? Now, something very interesting happens. So, you start with any sequence a n, b n, okay, where a n's are all left hand points okay and b runs are right hand points of the constituent intervals not all okay right any okay and suppose my a n increases to x and b n decreases to x then x has to be in c do you understand this why because a and b are all in C, a and s are in C, and C is closed, and a and converge to x, therefore x has to be in C similarly here, right? So, what does it suggest? At each nth level, remember there are two power n intervals, right? So, I could have chosen any one of them as long as if they converge to x, okay? Oh, sorry, a n increases to x, right? a n increases to x. Okay, this x has to be there. So, it makes us think or believe C may be uncountable. It, it has more points other than the end point. endpoints are the constituent intervals. Okay, again PRP, these are the things which are usually not done because when students learn by geometric intuition, of course, they can see the endpoints are how to be there, right? But we I can see that whenever this, I have a sequence okay out of the end points okay so remember i will have sequence a and k this will be k from 1 to n 1 to, to the power n this is my n right end points so let us say r n right so out of this therefore all right end points let us say it is r n right from those you take a subsequence a n okay in r and assume that a n goes to increases to x okay that point also should be there because of whatever explanation i gave right and how many such choices are there intuitively if you have learned cardinality countability uncountability etc okay you should see there are uncountable ways of this therefore c may be uncountable okay we will prove it but for that what we need 
okay so one so in particular let us call this so every x in c is a cluster point of c hence no x in c is an isolated point and c is already closed okay one say a set subset a of r or in any metric space is perfect if a is closed and no point of x is an isolated point i would usually say every point of x that is a is closed and every point of a is a cluster point of a so what you are conclude is c is perfect why make sure that you understand pause review proceed okay the next thing we want to look at okay now we want to prove these things rigorously so so far what you have shown c is closed in fact compact in fact, and also perfect some other things are compact already means closed perfect already means closed okay but i'm just writing all those things what you are observing right and outer measure m star of c is zero so we also have reasons to believe c is uncountable right there is another geometric combinatorial or geometric and combinatorial way of thinking i am not saying it's combinatorial it's combinatorial okay approach to show that c is uncountable the thing is look at that when does x belong to c that if only x belong to c and for all n now notice that so at the first step i have this okay and second step i have this third step i have this you understand these are middle these are remote so if x has to be there okay my x either it can be here or it can be here then if suppose it is here then it can be here or it can be here or it can be here or it can be here yeah sorry it's only two things therefore it can be here or it can be here similarly it can be here it can be here okay now it is there then after that it can be here it can be here if it is there it can be here hi the power went off and the system crashed okay let us continue and so in fact uh, whatever i was writing is not saved now okay so i just start afresh from only last point so what we saw was this so if x belong to c then i have okay then x has to be either here or here and this one when it comes to second thing it may be here or it may be here therefore if it is here there are two choices for this if this is here there are again two choices a point may come here or come here and this again i am going to do the next one will be this one will again go to this 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 and this so if it is here there are again two choices it can come here or it can go here it can come it can come and similarly here anything can come here or here okay so you can see it keeps on like goes here and this can go keeps going 
you might have seen this kind of picture in graph theory tree huh? so if you have learned your cardinality well this makes us guess cardinality of c must be 2 to the power of null okay that is the cardinality of r this okay this uh, at least a guess now okay now we want to give all these things in a rigorous proof okay and we so how do i do that so this is where the so called ternary expansions comes hey, do you remember in my last thing i asked you to look at decimal expansions article the video okay and many people who, as i said only know how to write decimal expansions of some numbers but they may not know the analysis theory behind that the concepts behind that it will make life easy so let me let us look at suppose i have a real number x in 0 1 okay then i want to define write x equal to something like this an by 3 to the power n n equal to 1 to infinity therefore and an will lie in between 0 1 and 2 that's it so notice that anything of this form this will be less than or equal to by comparison thing this will be 2 to the power 3 power n n equal to 1 to infinity therefore i can take 2 by 3 then it will be 1 by 3 to power n n equal to 0 to infinity that will be 2 by 3 1 minus 1 by 3 so it equal to 1 okay and this is already greater than or equal to 0 therefore any x in this form will be an element of 0 1 okay what i want to claim is give me any x i can write like this if i write like this then i am going to write x as yeah in an analogous way to thing i will simply write it as 0 point a1 a2 an dot 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 and i will write it as ternary okay that what does it stand for it simply stands for this an by 3 power n one to infinity this is all it stands for is it okay right so we want to say such a ternary expansion exists therefore how do i find a1 a2 an and such that all this an belong to only this set this is a question how to find this okay just make sure you had understood so far and exactly if you had understood decimal expansions you will know the way i define a1 is look at the set of integers k sorry maximum of the set of integers k naturally it is going to be in z plus so that k by 3 is less than x there is also another equal one okay i will write it in fact i should have written slightly smaller let me just go through okay so a1 i can write as maximum of k maximum of k in z plus so that k by 3 is strictly less than x there is also an equivalent version okay in that you want a1 to be maximum of k so that k by 3 is less than or equal to x notice that the difference is strictly less than than or equal to right that's my a1 now let's look at some example suppose my x equal to 1 by 3 what will be my a1 a1 will be 0 here whereas a1 will be 1 here do you understand that and suppose my x is equal to 2 by 3 my a1 will be 1 whereas a1 will be 2 here right now suppose my x equal to 7 by 9 right so 7 by 9 so I what I am looking for I am looking for k by 3 therefore it's 2k by or let us say multiply everything by 3 therefore it is going to be 3k by 9 should be less than 7 by 9 therefore my k is going to be maximum here is going to be a1 equal to 2 here also for the same reason a1 will be equal to 2 right k by 3 should be equal to 3k by 9 should be less than or equal to 7 by 9 therefore 
maximum possible k is 2 right this is it now how do I define 8 8 2 now x equal to 8 by 9 you do that so here again 3k by 9 should be less than 8 by 9 therefore my a1 here is 2 whereas here a1 will again be 2 ok right now how do I define my a2 a2 is maximum of I will not write k where now you, you know that that is a1 by 3 I already first first decimal expansion like that first ternary expansion I found out first terminal co sorry first ternary coefficient decimal coefficient ternary coefficient then k by 3 square should be less than 7 by 9 and here it will be a2 will be maximum of k a1 by 3 plus k by 3 squared should be less than or equal to 7 by 9 okay so I'm just I'm ignoring 1 by 3 2 by 3 because it will take a lot of time that if I do so what does that mean this means my I know what is a1 for 7 by 9 a1 is 2 right a1 is 2 therefore it is 2 by 3 plus k by 3 squared which I can write as 6 by 9 plus k by 9 should be less than 7 by 9 therefore you can see a2 has to be 0 right whereas here it will be a2 will be the same thing what do I have 2 by 3 plus k by 3 squared which is equal to 6 by 9 plus k by 9 should be less than equal to 7 by 9 therefore my a2 will be 1 here right for example when x equal to 1 by 3 what will be my a2 here you saw that so a2 is going to be the so I have 0 maximum of 0 by 3 plus k by 3 squared should be less than 1 by 3 which is 3 by 9 right therefore my k maximum a2 is going to be 2 in this case but when x equal to 2 by 3 what is a2 that is maximum of see x equal to 2 by 3 also we saw a1 is 1 right 1 by 3 plus k by 3 squared which is equal to 3 by 9 plus k by 9 should be less than 2 by 3 which is 6 by 9 therefore my k equal to 2 here so a2 is equal to 2 ok if I make some mistakes please okay I'm sure that you can fix it up okay whereas in the second version where less than I could instead of x then what will I have I'll have let us look at x equal to 2 by 3 then in that case we already saw x equal to k by 2 I already saw a1 is 2 right therefore a1 is 2 2 by 3 plus k by 3 squared should be less than or equal to 2 by 3 therefore k is 0 therefore my a2 in this case is 0 whereas a2 in this case is 2 right are you following please pause review proceed so how do I define an now therefore an is going to be maximum of a1 let us say n plus 1 a1 by 3 plus a2 by 3 squared plus a n by 3 power n plus k maximum of k k by 3 power n plus 1 should be less than x in the other case the same thing replaced by less than or equal to other a n plus 1 ok for example you can see in the case of x equal to 7 by 9 so we have found out a2 is for 7 by 9 it is a2 is 0 alright therefore a3 is going to be 2 by 
yeah, 2 by 3, right? Yeah. 2 by 3 plus 0 by 3 squared plus k by 3 cubed. I want it to be 7 by less than 9, which is 21 by 27. This is so 18 by 27 plus 1 by 27 should be less than 21 by 27. Therefore, my A3 is going to be 2 here. Yeah? And for x equal to 8 by 9, you try to find out. Okay? So, what you have done, therefore, is you have defined A n plus 1 equal to maximum of K so that A1 by 3 plus A2 by 3 squared plus A n by 3 to the power n plus K by 3 to the power n plus 1 should be less than x or in the other case less than or equal to. Is that clear? Therefore, then I will write x equal to a1, a2, an and write it in the bracket as a ternary. It is not decimal expansion, ternary expansion. So, when I write this equality, this is what I call the ternary expansion of x. right so why do I write like this notice that this right side actually stands for a n by the 3 to the power n onto infinity therefore I look at the partial sums x n equal to a k by 3 to the power k k equal to 1 to n then x minus a k sorry x minus a n we say s n converges to x therefore the infinite series is equal to x why is that? That you know easily because we already found out this one. K is the maximum, therefore what will be the thing? K by 3 to the power n plus 1 by x is less than equal to k plus 1 by 3 to the power n plus 1. Right? If k is the maximum, this is a. If you want, write it as a n plus 1. This is a n plus 1 plus 1. Right? Are you following? Yeah. Therefore, x lies between these two things. The distance between them is maximum 3 to the power n plus 1. Right? Therefore, x lies between this object, whatever you wrote. Okay. I am right. Sorry, I am writing a k by 3 to the power k 1 to n plus this and the same object. Are you following this? Okay. K that is a n plus 1 is strictly less than x, less than a n plus 1 1. Let me just write carefully. Therefore, it is a k by 3 to the power k k equal to 1 to n is strictly less than x, which is less than or equal to a to the power k by 3 to the power k k equal to 1 to n minus 1 plus a n plus 1 by 3 to the power n. Right? Therefore, this is again 1 to n minus 1 plus a k by 3 to the power n, a n by 3 to the power n. This is only n minus 1, first n term. Right? If you want to call this as something like uh, alpha, okay, my x is going to lie between alpha plus a n by 3 to the power n and alpha plus a n plus 1 by 3 to the power n. My x is going to be somewhere here. Right? Therefore, distance between this and this, this distance will be less than equal to this distance. But that distance is at most 3 to the power n. Therefore, I know x n converges to x. So, these are the things I, you know, we could have gone through very fast if you have seen the decimal expansions carefully. Right? Now, let us go back to what we did. Suppose my x happens to be in g n. Let us say first g 1. What was g 1? g 1 was the middle one third. Right. Now, notice that if x belongs to this, my x has to be, the a1 will always be 1. You cannot find anything for this. Yeah, okay. a1 for x will be 1. Right. And if x belongs to g2, you can see a2 has to be, again, 1. Because why? I have something like, 1 by 9, 
2 by 9 and then will be 7 by 9 and 8 by 9 okay this will be 2 by 3 that is 6 by 9 plus 1 by 9 right so my a2 will always be 1 therefore it is very clear if x belong to g then okay the there is always 1 as a ternary coefficient an. one an has to be 1 there is no way out but you should contrast this with 8 by 9 and 7 by 9 that's the reason why I did this okay so I without much thing I will simply write this okay so 7 by 9 as we saw pause review proceed 7 by 9 what we did was proved it as 0 0.20 after that it will be 2 2 2 2 2 2 and whereas 8 by 9 okay we got two expansions okay namely 0 2 2 after that 0 0 0 okay but look at that 8 by 9 I hope I'm, I have done it correctly yeah yeah right okay so I hope you have done it correctly just to check it okay so my x belong to the canter set C if or only if there exists a ternary ex expansion x equal to 0 0.a1, a2, an etc which is ternary so that all my ans belong to 0 or 2 only why do I say there exists a ternary expansion because let us look at 1 by 3 if I looked at something like less than and less than equal to you can see in, in this dictionary expansion it is already 1 my a1 will be 1 whereas in this standard expansion my a1 will be 0 and 1 by 3 will be 0 0 2 2 2 2 2 2 whereas here it will be 0 1 0 0 0 0 so what I am saying is there is at least one ternary expansion in which only zeros are to appear ok please understand pause review proceed is it ok yeah now suppose my a b is belong to my g n what does it mean it is one of the removed removed intervals at the end stage so how do A and B look like see these are the things which are never discussed in depth ok why I am doing this this I am doing this so that you know how how to go back and forth with the geometric description as an analytic description ok so you should have some kind of confidence because I find that many students the geometric description ok middle third middle third is much easier after that they are unable to do that simply write down the decimal expansion do whatever they want ok please understand these things can be learned rigorously and it's more fun So if I have my a1, so so I am sorry for a, but let me write as a equal to zero a1, a2, a n minus one. 
Notice that it has survived up to n minus 1 steps. Okay. If it has survived up to n minus 1 steps, then I would expect a1, a2, a n minus 1 should be only in 0 and 2. Only at the nth stage, I get as, so my a, I would expect to be something like a k by, oh, how do I write it, a k to the 3 power k, k equal to 0 to n minus 1 plus, okay, my a n by 3 to the power n, okay, that will be the coefficient, this one will be 1. And therefore, the b will be exactly the same thing, a k by 3 to the power k, 1 to n minus 1, then this will be a n plus 1 by 3 to the power n. Okay, so please spend some time, read this. Okay, so now come back, so each x in 0, 1 admits ternary expansion and some admit two ternary expansion like decimal expansions, okay, terminating, non-terminating. Okay, so what do I do? I say x belong to C, if one only if x has a ternary expansion where all its coefficients are are in 0, 2. That's it. Therefore, okay, I write x as summation a n by 3 to the power n 1 to infinity, which is a 0 a 1 a 2 a n ternary where a n's are in 0 and 2. Okay. Now, we use this to show c cardinality of c is the same as cardinality of 0 1 and hence it is same as cardinality of r and hence it is not only uncountable, we know what the cardinality is. In particular, C is uncountable. Okay. So, how do I do that? We set up a function from C to 0, 1. Okay. To start with any x here, which is the form summation a n by 3 to the power n 1 to infinity, where a n's are in 0, 2, right? Map it to y where y is b n by 2 to the power n 1 to infinity where b n is a n by 2 and this is a binary expansion. Do you understand this? So, in other words, I have something like a 1 a 2 a n dot dot ternary. It is mapped to 0 point a 1 by 2, a 2 by 2, a n by 2 binary. The way same way we did ternary expansion, we can also write the binary expansion, right. Therefore, this is a map, okay. So, this map is on to, why? If you give me point something like summation b n by 2 to the power n, which is same as b 1, b 2, b n as binary, then I will define to be point a 1 a 2 a n ternary where my a n is 2 times b n and notice that this will be all the, the my a n's are therefore going to be 0 or 2 therefore this is going to correspond to something like a n by 3 power n this of course belong to 0 1 Therefore, it is an element of 0, 1. It is also an element of the counter set because it admits a ternary expansion where all my ends are 0 or 2. Okay. And therefore, I have this function 0, 1 to C is on 2 and we know this is, sorry, I am sorry, C to 0, C to 0, 1 on 2. Right. 
therefore for each element there is at least one element here which gets mapped to therefore c is cardinal of c is greater than or equal to cardinal of 0 1 but c is contained in this therefore cardinal of this is greater than or equal to 0 okay therefore we conclude the result before we go further f is not 1 1 so even though f from 0 c to 0 1 is on 2 it is not 1 1 that is the one of the reasons why I chose 7 by 9 okay for example 7 by 9 we saw something like uh, 2 0 2 2 2 etc and 8 by 9 we wrote this as 0 0.22 0, 0, 0. So, where does it go under F? It goes to 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 binary. This also goes to 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 binary. Okay. What is this? This is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 squared which is 3 by 4. This object. For the same reason this is also equal to 3 by 4. Okay. Therefore, f of 7 by 9 equal to f of 8 by 9 and both are equal to 3 by 4 therefore f is not 1 1 so what you have constructed now that is more important ok we have seen any countable sub subset of r is our, has outer measure 0 and any non degenerate interval in r the outer measure is its length. We have seen this. Okay. But you wanted to give an example of a, an uncountable set whose outer measure is zero. Okay. Have we done that? Yeah. Because C we saw the outer measure is zero and we showed it the cardinality is the cardinality of the close interval zero one and hence it is in particular uncountable. So this is what you have done. Okay. Please go through this it may be slightly tough okay but my best thing is whenever there is a PRP please work out certain ternary expansions of you choose some numbers whatever fancy is like 5 by 7 okay 3 by 8 some such thing choose that and try to find the ternary expansion and try to find whether it admits more than one ternary expansion and try to find some number okay which has two ternary expansion in which one appears in other one one does not appear at all we are just now I saw gave an example right try something playing with that for about 15 20 minutes will make you very confident about candor set ternary expansion how to work with it this will be needed when you want to talk about candor Lebesgue function okay please take some time just to don't be satisfied only the geometric description which is very easy okay as you know I like geometry but in spite of that you should also learn very rigorous analytical way of doing that okay we will meet again I hope you enjoyed